welcome. Buenos dias. How you doing, well, Paulie? Good, man. How you doing? I'm I've been. Doing I mean, I've been better. I'm kind of down and out a little bit. Just uh, down and out a little bit. Just got salty. done. Dry. I mean, I'm st still dry heaving a little bit, but getting better. Getting better. Them damn lions. Great season, but just blew it. That's a good what thing you, you didn't do? bet the house, man. That's. <laughs> Who says I didn't? I, maybe I, I hope you didn't. <laughs> maybe I didn't break the news yet, and I'm just I got packing boxes and stuff here behind me. Yeah, we'll uh, see next week. Next week you're gonna go back to the old mic. You'd be cashing everything. In. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not even this one. Not even this mic. It'll be the old old mic. The little Logitech I, one. Yeah, yeah, I gotta drag it out of the. I gotta drag it out of the storage locker. I still have this though. We can bring this out. Like this is. I still got this camera. Oh, that there. little. Wow. <laughs> That's well, for views. Welcome guys, to the Crucible welcome. Podcast. Welcome, welcome to the welcome. Crucible Podcast. Repeating. We're repeating each other. We're echoing. Yeah. Welcome, guys. Everybody. Uh, good to see you guys. Uh, what is it? Today will be that's, Thursday that's, when this is airing. That's that's kind of the that's kind of the uh, headline of the show. Echoing. Echoing something from somebody else. Right. It's absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I want to get right into that. Um, guys, stick around yeah. to the end. We're going to be talking about a giveaway. Um, you want to catch that. You want to definitely catch stick that. around for that. Stick around. If you have never seen one of these episodes, you're going to want to stick around for that. And uh, hit that like button if you're just sitting around doing nothing. Do it. So, Paulie, about a week, a week and some change ago, um, yes. you, you brought something to my attention. And yes. I actually had seen the post as well as a fellow stacker on Instagram. On Instagram and yep. You want to, you want to throw it up on the screen? Uh, he mm -hmm. said something pretty, pretty profound that I think uh, it, it kind of hit you pretty hard because I think you've uh, you've kind of messed around here a little bit more than I have. Um, Sh sure, sure. So it's it's a great topic. Okay, so I'm gonna look over the screen and read it. Okie Stacker on Instagram. Um, I'm gonna tag him in something so he sees that we're talking about him. Um, we took your post <laughs> and we're gonna talk about it. Thank um, you. <laughs> yeah, thank. Thank you, by the way. This is a very great topic. Unpopular opinion. For those who are not sitting here uh, looking at this and listening to us, unpopular opinion, he writes. I really don't like seeing the vault box Marvel slash DC coin box openings. Reminds me too much of sports cards hobby that have become an expensive gamble. It also takes focus and joy out of collecting. And instead, it makes dopamine hit of how much your pull is worth just his two cents um i sent that to you when i read it and you know as i was reading it i saw that you saw the post you know you can mm -hmm. part everybody's stuff and i saw that you had already saw it and i said well maybe he just saw it or well whatever but i said this is actually a great topic to bring about uh, to make a video on there you go we've done husky has done an unboxing of those marvel coins i've done ripping packs of the ultra breaks i've talked about vault boxes on my channel i've talked about all of it i'm not i'm not against what he said there i mean everybody has their own opinion i actually agree with with quite a bit of it because i'm not too big into cards i actually had a guy i work with come up to me at work asking me about cards and grading services for right. cards and i said dude listen i said i don't know diddly squat about cards and grading services i said i know i've got a stan lee graded and it was graded by psa i said i know psa is a great good grading service and then i started talking to him about you know where he got it and blah 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 but whatever i said maybe talk to your your hobby shop maybe they can send some stuff into you All right um but it is a great topic because Anytime I do a video on that, you've got 50-50 as in, yep, these are great. I'm going to buy one. I'm going to try and get one. They sell out so fast. Rats, I didn't get the last one. Hopefully, I can get in on this one. And then you got the others that say, don't waste your money. You're just wasting your money. It ain't worth nothing. Blah, blah, blah. Right? Well, there's truth to all of it, and there's falsehood to all of it. You know? Right. So that's kind of where we just want to start rolling into it like you have some pictures you want to show you opened up a box here on on this show and i don't know what you did with them i don't know if you sold them if you kept them but what was the overall total for that 
that Marvel box? What, what did you have to pay for for one of those boxes? Uh, I, I want to say, sorry, go ahead. I'm just going to say that it came with the possibility of different mintage mintage coins. They're they're card coins with the possibility of getting a one tenth ounce of gold. Very rare piece of gold, and all the coins themselves, beautiful coins, also very rare. Doesn't matter which one you get because they only make so many. That's the point of it. There's that's the rarity of it. That's what gets the collectors interested in it. Right. Yeah, so I, I believe so again, this is just an empty box remnants of the ones that I 10 sold bucks on eBay. Yeah, the, and the boxes themselves are selling. So isn't yes, that crazy? They are. they are. So in that box, uh, I think uh it's two coins that come comes in it, and I think I paid maybe somewhere between two twenty five and two seventy five, somewhere in that range. I bought two of them, uh opened them both. Actually, I bought three of them, sold one for five hundred, which was amazing. I mean, right away. These just think of that. Sold out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Think of that. They're sold. They sell out instantly. You're lucky if you are a collector and want to get one. You're lucky to get one at the retail price, right? Right. Then yeah. they go on eBay and sell out there for five, six hundred, seven hundred dollars unopened boxes. Right. So this one did go for five hundred for for one box. Uh, second one, the first one that I ripped open. Uh, ended up getting a pretty good pull there. So I think my total there was about 650 once sold. And then on the third box, I think it equaled about 500. So about about break even as if I hadn't opened the box at all. Uh, so overall, I mean, it's definitely over 100% profit on each box. Which is never a bad thing. No, for sure. Now, again, what we, we can get into... So people that do that, people who show that, people who show that they can, you can get profit, not everybody can do that, which is very understandable. And, and I, mm -hmm. again, going back to his post, maybe he doesn't have the means of doing that, which is completely fine. But to, to, to not enjoy someone else's joy, just it, it doesn't sit right with me. If someone is doing it and they're happy that they're doing it, why does that piss you off? Yeah. Well, that's, that's a good question. And I could see, as you said earlier, I could see both sides of the story. Yes. So to, to go to, um, to kind of the allure behind it, right. You don't know what's in the box. And yes. just to show an example here, this was the oh, star, star Wars series. This was the first of the, first the one, yep. mint boxes, right? So they've done star Wars. Then they did Marvel. The most recent one they've done is DC. Yes. So in this case, um, this one is anything with a blue background, a blue core to the uh, to the mini slab. You're going to see that they only made 30 ones of each of these. So 30 of whatever that is, was that Mandalorian, 30 of Grogu, etc. Yes. So <clears throat> with that said, you know, that's a tight mintage. And then they had one that's one of 20 and then they had one that's one of 10. Right. And then they had one that's like that, that was the gold one. Right? one of the gold one was one of 10. One of ten was gold, but I think I think they got them as high as maybe two hundred and fifty, which is right. still very very low. Right, which is why they're selling for so much. But then again, exactly. you look at you look at the image, um, and you can't really zoom in on this one, but you could see that all it is is essentially a sticker on a bar, and it has its individual serialization at the bottom, and I think it also says each individual character's and, name. You so. know, I, I always wonder that. I've never held one in my hand. I I never bought them. I didn't know if it was some type of art bar or if it was actually just a laid on graphic on that bar and that's and right. that's what they seem to be as a laid on graphic correct there's no relief on it it's just a sticker essentially gotcha. and at, at the bottom you would see laser etched the name yes. of the character and then the number this the one of 20 or one of 30 or whatever sure. um so the allure behind it is you have a, a very limited mintage of these highly sought after characters and even in a set like this right you might have uh i don't know who i don't know who this uh top top row number four or even number three i'm okay. sure if you're a diehard star wars fan you'll you know, know who those are but they're minor characters overall right you would be much more inclined to to go after a boba fett or a mandalorian and by the by that nature those two would go for a lot more than those minor characters exactly so, so just, it, just based on their character, just, just right. their character in general, I, I don't think it would have mattered if it would have been a Mandalorian in the, the series of 250. That's going to be one that somebody wants for their collection. I mean, you, you 3D printed a damn helmet. 
Right. I mean, yeah. that's where is that? Right, right back there. Yeah, right there. <laughs> right on. So, and and the amount that these are going for is extraordinarily high, right? And I'm talking agreed. What like like six seven hundred percent over spot in some cases. Uh, yep. So let me show this one right at that here. point. At that point, spot is irrelevant to even think about. Absolutely. When you're talking about those, and that's I, I just hope people don't get confused with that. At that point, there is no spot. There's right. zero spot price. So you're looking at this more as a collector item, not as a Boolean piece, because it's not it's not yes. Boolean anymore at this point. So you look here, this is the, this would be a quarter Ooh, ounce la, la. Of, of gold, right? And this is, again, from the Star Wars set. You got Darth Vader's uh -huh. effigy or whatever, one of 10. And uh, it is a quarter ounce. This is certificate number 10. So this is 10 of 10, uh, which is, you know, more desirable than like a six of 10. So in this case, this one that, again, a quarter ounce of gold is what, 500 bucks? It's going yeah, for 7,905, right? That's an insane. Wait, but wait. You get There's the other more. coin with it. You get the other coin with it. Right. And the other coin is what? Uh, C3PO and R2. So very cool set. Fantastic. But I mean, as a collector. That's a diehard collector. That's a diehard collector. So can that's you right. knock them? Can you knock them for buying that? No, that's like knocking the guy that paid a hundred grand for the American Silver Eagle. That was the last one minted. Yeah. I mean, that's no longer a dollar coin. Right. Will he get a hundred grand out of again to the right collector? Guaranteed. He will Yeah, guaranteed. He will. Exactly. So I understand both sides of it. <clears throat> the reason I say that is um, going back to a guest that we had on the show several episodes back by now. Uh, it was Tommy. Um, oh yeah. Stack in NYC. And he said something that's very, What's up, it, was, it was, it was very profound. And it was that most of us as, collectors stackers etc we have an addictive nature right mm -hmm. we we are like do, do an inventory on yourself and count how many times you've been addicted to something and it could be yeah. it could be anything it could be a substance it could be gambling it could be um i don't know pornography it could be whatever but we have that tendency to us it's kind of like in our nature almost and creating a coin series that is centered around that kind of gives you like a double whammy. So yeah. you're going to be drawn to it. And that's what's making them go so high in value off the bat. A hundred percent. That's, I mean, look what we can go to Atmex and look what they did with the, not even them. I mean, they're, they're minted by New Zealand mint, but Atmex set the price of the last version of the best car bar, the 10 ounce. Oh, right. They had to have seen how much money they were losing out on and just, started off a hundred dollars higher than they did the two previous years. And mm. I don't think they sold out. I mean, they might've, but it took months rather yeah. than hours. Yeah. They kind of shot themselves in the foot. People saw that they did. They shot themselves in the foot. They got greedy and that's, that's business is what it is. Mm -hmm. That's there's, there's really not much you can do about it. They set the price. If you want it, buy it. Right. Didn't have much wiggle room from there as far as a resale, because those did happen to be a pretty popular resale. You could only get so many in your hand yourself. I think it was maybe five that you could personally buy. Now I, I get there's ways around that. You can make multiple accounts. You can have your wife make an account. I mean, there's things I've done in the past, not anymore, but we can get into other things. Like he mentioned, like, like these vault boxes which I've talked about quite a bit on, on my personal channel. It's uh, it's another call it a gamble. If, if we want to call it a gamble, it's, it's, it's a thrill seeker. It is compared to opening up a box of cards, looking for that one of one or one of 10 or what have you. Again, like I said, I'm not in the card world, so I don't know what that's all about, but sitting down, not knowing what you have in front of you, is the dopamine just hits you right and yep. sometimes and, and i know people do it i mean it's happened to me it happens to everybody when you make that purchase how fast you start thinking like did i just f up did i actually want to do that did i want to spend thirteen hundred dollars on a vault box series five to potentially get absolutely nothing out of it or i could have went to the coin shop and got the same thing for 200 bucks but are they really are they really thirteen hundred dollars? 
twelve fifty. Twelve fifty. Thirteen hundred just sounds better. Who who says twelve fifty? Actually, it's it's. I'm sorry. It's twelve forty nine ninety nine. That's what series five was. That's crazy, man. That I, that that creates a barrier for me. Uh, that's beyond how much I'm willing to gamble. I when they first started them, I thought it was a great idea. It's a it's a fresh new way to get people involved in the hobby of collecting. These things have absolutely nothing to do with stacking. They sold you something and also offered to buy back from you instantly. You just had to scan the thing. It told you how much they would offer it to you and however the shipping labels worked. It was all done through their website. Great idea for somebody who just was looking for that quick fix. Maybe they made a few bucks on them. Tough to say. Never did I say go run out and buy these things. It was just a point of interest. Hey, check them out if this is something that you want to get yourself into because it is new. Same goes for those Ultra Break packs. Um, the most recent ones. Oh, where'd I go here? Oh, my mouse went over. Um, the most recent ones is just a standard MS-70 American Silver Eagle in right. a different slab by PCGS. A slab that you can only have if you bought this pack. Now, again, you can go on eBay and buy them, but you can't send your coins into PCGS and say, hey, I want one of those ultra slabs. It's not happening. The only way you can get them is secondary market or buy them straight from their website. Hmm. You know, it's it's <clears throat> it's almost reminiscent of uh, when I used to do my auctions and I was actually kind of in a rut where, you know, people were not bidding up too high. So I ended up with a, a lot of excess inventory that I couldn't really offload. So what I ended up doing is I got like 50 little envelopes and or little okay. whatever bubble mailers and I would put one coin in each and some of them were low end, some of them were high end. And I'd even put like, I don't know, a gram of gold or whatever in a few of them. Uh, okay. And I would sell each pouch at 50 bucks and you would, you know, run the chance of, you know, striking out. But even if you strike out, you're still getting an ounce, right? You're getting an it's, ounce of something. Yeah. And then if you hit on the high end, you might get a two ouncer or you might get, I don't know, like a queen's beast or something, or you might end yeah. up with a gram of gold. So people would buy them out. They'd be like, oh, I'll take six. I'll take eight. And then, mm -hmm. you know, within seconds, I was sold out. Yeah. And it's a great way to offload inventory. And so I'm looking at these and it reminds me of that. It's a great way to offload some pieces and get a premium on it. So I get it. I get it from that side too, right? I get it from what yeah, Open sure. Stacker's saying, sure. and I get it from the other side too. As a business proposition, it is yes. very unique, and it is definitely a great way to, I don't know, kind of advertise your, for lack of better terms, your scheme. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to bring up, so this is, for those who don't know, this is what the vault boxes were. So this Jeez. is, that's three packs per box, one coin per pack, right? So... And this is a sold item. Yeah, this okay. So this retailed for twelve fifty. It sold on eBay for fifteen hundred. These things sold out, and they always sell out pretty near instantly. Hmm. People, people who get them love them. My problem with this is, and maybe this is where, and we'll swing back to his his um, opinion at, at the end of this. And, and I believe this strongly, even though I know some people on the platform, I feel that Vault Box is in bed with whatnot because there's just so they, the sellers on whatnot get many, many more than you or I could possibly get trying to buy them from their online website. So you could buy a case at a time, which is six of these boxes. You could buy that, that made a case. That's all that we could get. And you'd be lucky if you could do that twice. Like I said, if you had, if you were, if you, you and I went in and said, okay, let's go and try and get as many of these things we possibly can, we would be lucky to even get one box. That's how fast these things go for. Right. Where whatnot is promoting their sales of these, their live sales, the day they release. So not only do they already have the boxes in hand before you and I can buy them? They're selling them for much, much more and showing before I can even get my box in my hand. They're showing what's being unboxed 
and which would really kill if they started opening up all the big hits. If you started seeing big hits drop and drop and drop, now you know your box is coming and you've got a chance of potentially having, what, some slab 19 22 piece dollars? Yeah, you get skunked. Yeah. That's my biggest thing about these. Now, again, that's the plus side to them for, for that company as well. They've got mm -hmm. a, a source of sellers <laughs> on that platform to move their product lickety split. And again, going back to his statement, I can see where that would be an issue with many, many people. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's kind of like, um, you remember with the U S mint when they would make those big releases, but, uh, only a certain number would be available to the public and the rest would go to like AppMex or something. It almost makes it uh, an unfair advantage to a company yes. like AppMex who is guaranteed a portion Yep. And because they're guaranteed the portion, when they post it on on their website, they can post it for you know double or triple yes. what what was originally offered on uh, on US Mint's website. And and the thing about that is is it takes a set of cojones to do what Atmex is doing. They are yep. a huge huge company, and they okay, so they they do buy their bullion eagles from. The U.S. Mint, they do get them for such a low cost, just above spot, and then they turn around and sell them for that premium. They got a set of balls to do that. That's they're they're buying like twenty five thousand ounces of silver. Who else is going to go to the U.S. Mint and buy twenty five thousand ounces of silver and just sit on it? Nobody. Not not many <laughs> big bullion dealers. That's who. So they could sell us one or two or a tube here or a tube there. That's who's doing it. They they, they sit on these things for quite a while, but. Silver sells, and it's always going to sell. When yeah. people have the money, they buy. When they don't have money, they don't buy. So you were mentioning the Ultra Breaks, too. <clears throat> and I just went on eBay and uh, pulled up a what recent sale for an Ultra Breaks item. And they, so the Ultra Breaks breaks them into three tiers, right? Yeah. They have the standard label. Then there's like a gold label, which I don't know, maybe like one of 500. And then they have the, would you call it, Infinity? Infinity right? label. Yep. Infinity so, label. So. so the gold's like one in 100. And the infinity is one in 10. One in 10. So here's what happens when you... This Typically, one there's 3,000 packs. One of the more recent ones. There you go. Right? And so these packs are what? Like uh, 150? Something like that? For a pack? Yeah, I, I think the reverse proofs were somewhere around that. 169, possibly. Something like that. For one. And you could have bought the set from US Mint for 189. Ungraded. Not in this fancy... This fancy hole. Look, I, I I really wish I could rip one of these open and have that infinity label. And I know yeah. that every time I rip it, yeah, there's a chance, a very, very slim chance. But That's this that. is the point, this is the point of them. People who are buying them are hoping that they get this label. Why? Because of that price right next to that label, twenty five hundred dollars. You paid one eighty nine and you got twenty five hundred. I got one for and I like I said, I forget what what I paid, but mine was a silver silver label a uh, piece dollar and it sold for 298 dollars so but here's the thing with with this piece here you can go on ebay right now and find this exact same coin at the exact same grade minus that infinity label for 300 bucks yes yes so this is this is more than 10 times that it's like 11 times that but think about it though so you started buying these at series one and you happen to buy a bunch of them series one which I would have to go back to my own videos if you want to go back and check it out to see exactly what series one was, right? I believe it was the uncirculated Morgan dollars. Mm -hmm. So you got the infinity label. Well, guess what? Now they continue to make them. And guess what? They still make infinity labels. So you've got a choice. Sell that infinity label or collect the series until they run out. And then this mm -hmm. is your collection. And, and God bless them, people collect them there's nothing wrong with that right and 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 i get that well you're just buying a label well maybe but they enjoy it yeah well i'd, I'd love to hear from the viewers put it in the comments section if you're the type that's uh a 70 is a 70 or the label matters because it, it creates a level of exclusivity of uh of rarity to it so yes put it put it in the chat let us know what you think
And, and a, a, a simple slab to talk about would be something that, you know, something from the U.S. Mint. Now, you, you don't know where your Boolean Eagles come from because they're not mint marked, right? They, right? they could come from Philadelphia. They could come from West Point. The only way to know where they come from is if you have a monster box and it's sealed and it's labeled on that monster box where they were minted. Right. And that's where dealers, whoever myself if i was buying a monster box and it had you could send that box into ngc or pcgs and they could slap every single one of those eagles if you chose to with a special label that says these were minted at west point or philadelphia and that's the only way you could get that done other than that anytime you see a slabbed eagle it's not on there because they didn't know anytime you see a slabbed eagle that says that on there that whole monster box was sent there and that's how they were Unless, of course, it's got a mint mark on it, you know, like a proof that's from San Francisco. Right. Or West Point proof. Those have mint marks. Bullion coins don't. Yeah. Good stuff, guys. Let us know in the comments what you think of this whole, you know, mint trading coins and whatever. They, these uh, ultra breaks and stuff. And definitely if you would if you would dump big bucks into collecting these and, and have you purchased them are are you collecting them are you a collector of the gold the infinity or the silver or anything from the vault box vault box things is the red slabs if you get a red slab they go crazy when they're doing their live unboxings because it's a rare thing to get is one of their red slab coins oh and even better i want to know if you've gotten a big hit if you've ripped yeah. something that just cashed out bam i want to hear about that so let's let's jet let's jet back to this. Okay. Unpopular opinion. I don't believe it's an unpopular opinion. I think this is a great post and it sparked a great conversation between you and I and anybody mm -hmm. listening. And I hope there's a lot of comments coming in because we do we do drop these as as a, a premiere video. So there's a live chat going on right now as we're talking. Thank you for being here. But this I don't believe is an unpopular opinion. It is his opinion, which is his opinion which is completely fine and i agree and disagree with some of it and that's just the way i feel about it i don't i don't hate this post it's more posts like this should be made for awareness yeah. if, if anything for awareness spark the conversation it's good so thank you oki yeah thank good you stuff, buddy man. for doing that so now if you made it this far husky tell them what they could win you guys can win oh it's right here bam oh I dropped it Minus the ding. <laughs> Don't mind Grade the ding. that. All Grade right. That. Grade it now. It's going to be MS69. No, this is a uh, wood pour. Five ounces, guys, poured by myself, and it will be stamped and counter stamped with my stamp and Polly's. Guys, this is a unique piece. It's going to be a one of one, and it's up for grabs for one person, one special person who's a viewer or listener to the show. Three ways to win. Number one, you go on cruciblelive.com. It is just cruciblelive.com. And you sign up for our mailing list. We don't spam you, so it's cool. Just a little it's bit, cool. right? It's cool. Maybe Instagram. A couple times a month, maybe. Maybe, if that, right? Instagram is going to be at The Crucible Podcast, and YouTube is going to be at The Crucible-Podcast. So you subscribe or sign up for any one of those three or all three of the three ways to win. And if you are in the live chat, I've probably been dropping it a few times, but pinned at the top of this in the live chat will be the YouTube channel. So if you're listening and you're not subscribed to the Crucible podcast on YouTube, get go on. up top, hit that one, hit that subscribe, get yourself entered. That's three ways to get entered. Drop us some comments on the videos that are on the podcast channel so we know that you did get subscribed. Everywhere else, your name will pop up. So there, there you are. Husky, appreciate you. great show, brother. Thank you, man. All right. We'll see you all next week. Thank <laughs> you.